In this episode, we'll add a recovery flow to help bring customers who may have abandoned their cart back to checkout to complete their purchase. To build this, we'll start by using checkout to collect consent from our customers, giving us permission to email them. We need to do this because abandoned cart emails fall into a broader category of promotional emails that customers must agree to receive before we can send them. After that, we'll configure the recovery options within our checkout sessions, and we'll listen to the session expired events so that we know when we need to reach out. We're going to be building on sample code we've built up in previous episodes of this series. You can find links to that code and to previous episodes in this video's description. The description also contains links to more information about best practices around sending promotional emails. Let's start by quickly reviewing the code we have. Within our app, we have a checkout HTML page with a simple form action. And when the submit button is clicked, the create checkout session route is called. This route generates the underlying checkout session object and redirects the customer to Stripe's hosted checkout page. We also have a webhook handler that listens for various checkout session related events. To build our recovery flow, we'll make changes to both of these sections of our code. The first thing we need to do is collect consent from our customers to email them. And if we haven't already done this in our application, we can use Checkout to do it for us. To enable this option, I need to accept the Checkout Terms of Service in my dashboard. Next, I'm going to add the consent collection parameter to our Checkout Session Create call, and I'll set its nested promotions parameter to auto. I'm going to restart my server, and I'll also set up the Stripe CLI listen command to forward webhook events to my handler. Now if we go through our checkout flow as a customer, we see a checkbox to consent to receive emails. Whether this checkbox is enabled by default will depend on the data laws in the customer's country and the country of your business. We'll complete the purchase and go back to our server and look at our logs. And if we look at the session object we extracted from the checkout session completed event, we can see the consent promotions attribute set to opt-in. We won't do it here, but we recommend you store this value with your customer's email address in your database. The next thing to do is configure the recovery options within checkout. A checkout session expires when its expires at timestamp is reached. By default, this is set to 24 hours after the session was originally created. And a checkout session is considered abandoned if a buyer hasn't completed checking out by that point. Once a session expires, it's no longer usable, but we can add support for recovering it by setting the after expiration recovery attribute in our create checkout session call. With this attribute enabled, our checkout sessions will have an after expiration recovery hash, which will contain a URL we can send to the customer so they can complete their purchase. To utilize this URL, we'll add listening for checkout session expired events to our webhook handler. When we receive a notification that a session has expired, we'll check if the customer has permitted us to send them emails. If they have, we'll confirm that we have an address for them and send them an email with the recovery URL included. If they click on that URL, they'll be taken to a new checkout session where they can complete their purchase. We might want to include information about their order, so we'll pass the whole checkout session to our email method. In this demo, we're going to stub this out and not actually send emails. In production, we might want to check other factors before we send an email, such as how many times we've recently sent emails to this address. For now, we'll confirm we have an address and log the recovery URL. To test our code, we'll go through the checkout flow change the quantity we are purchasing and set our email address. Then click the cancel button instead of completing our purchase. As mentioned earlier, checkout sessions typically don't expire for 24 hours, and obviously we don't want to wait that long to test our code. We can work around this by using the Stripe CLI to manually expire the session. We'll copy the checkout session ID and use it in our Stripe checkout sessions expire call. If we look at the object returned from the CLI, we can see the after expiration recovery hash with the recovery URL. And if we go back to our server logs, we can see that our code handled the checkout session expired event and made a call to our method to email the customer. We can copy and paste the recovery URL into our browser to see the experience our customer would have. We're taken to a new checkout session, but the information about the order has been preserved. In this case, the number of items I was going to buy. It looks like our recovery flow is working, and there are a couple additional features we might want to take advantage of now. One thing we might want to change is when our checkout sessions expire. That way we can know earlier if a customer has abandoned their cart. We can adjust this by setting the expires at parameter on the create session call. Let's set this so our sessions expire after two hours. 
timestamp parameters in the Stripe API are set in epic time in seconds, so we can set this by taking the current time and then adding two hours worth of seconds. Now if the customer abandons their cart, we'll get a checkout session expired webhook after two hours instead of 24. Another thing we might be interested in is tracking whether our recovery emails are successful in bringing our customers back on site. We can track this by checking the recovered from attribute when we receive a checkout session completed event. Let's add a method to log both the original and recovered session IDs. We can see this in action by going through the same flow we used to test our recovery URL. We'll start a checkout flow, cancel it, use the CLI to manually expire the session, and then visit the recovery URL to complete the purchase. Looking at our logs, we can see we have both session IDs. There's one more feature we can add to our recovery flow, and that's a discount to incentivize our customer to come back and finish their purchase. We can do this by adding the allowed promotion codes attribute to the after expiration configuration options when we create the session. There's a lot of flexibility in how you can use discounts with checkout, but for this example, I have a simple code to take 10% off that I'll share with my customers in the email I send them. We'll go through the recovery flow one more time, and this time you can see I have the option to enter a promotional code, come back 10. That's it for this demo. Let's do a quick recap of what we covered as we built our recovery flow for abandoned carts. First, we configured checkout to collect consent from our customer so we can send them promotional emails. Next, we enabled the checkout session recovery options. Now when a checkout session expires, we'll have a new URL we can send to our customers. Since we didn't want to wait for the session to expire, we used the Stripe CLI to make an API call to manually expire the session. We then added some optional features, starting with adjusting down the time before a session expires so we can reach out to our customers earlier on. We also added support for associating sessions generated from recovery URLs to the original sessions. We can use this to track the conversion from our emails. Lastly, we configured our session recovery options to accept promotional codes. This lets us use a discount to incentivize our customers to return. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check this video's description for more resources around getting started with checkout.